Hello, Revolve Bible Church. Welcome to 5-Minute Connect. This is the fourth installment of our special series, Singing in the Storm. And to check out the previous three videos, I want to point you down below to check out the links there that you can visit and get caught up with where we're at. As Paul is going through Ephesians 1, singing to God, he's been rattling off glorious blessings of election, adoption, redemption, and now the blessing of wisdom and insight. He's saying, God has opened the eyes of my heart. He's opened my mind to understand truths. And he's blessed me by his grace with wisdom to be able to live in light of those truths. But the question is, what in particular has God given Paul and every believer insight and wisdom into? Well, he goes on to talk about a mystery in verse nine, the mystery of his will. The word mystery literally means something that was previously not known, but now is known. There was something prior to Paul's time that was not known, but now in the age that he's writing in the first century, it is known as he's composing the word of God. But what is that? Well, it's revealed in verse 10. With a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. What Paul is rejoicing about in his heart is that God has given him insight and wisdom into the second coming of Christ, that Jesus Christ will return. He will come back. And he will have all things summed up to himself. Literally, everything will be brought under Jesus Christ. Now, this is not referring to universalism. This is not referring to everyone being saved. This is referring to everybody and everything coming under the lordship of Jesus Christ. This has with it the picture that Paul paints in Philippians chapter two, verses nine through 11, every knee bowing, every tongue confessing under the earth, on earth and in heaven that Jesus Christ is Lord. As the father has exalted him as Lord, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Jesus has the highest name. He has the highest ruling position. Paul even uh, comments on that at the end of Ephesians chapter one, verses 20 through 23. But Jesus will come back and he's going to come back to earth to exert that authority and that power over every living thing and establish his kingdom on earth. We call it the millennial kingdom. We haven't arrived there yet. That is when Jesus will come back. But what Paul is saying is he's rejoicing over the fact that God has opened his mind and his eyes to see that and believe that. And what hope and how grateful we're to be as Christians to know the future. Now, we don't know when Jesus is coming back. That's up to the Father in the fullness of times, Paul says in verse 10. When the time is ripe and ready, Jesus will come back. But we know what will happen as our eschatology our study of end times informs us. Jesus came down the first time as a lamb to be slain, the suffering servant. But his second return, he's going to come back as the lion of Judah, victorious, conquering his enemies and lifting up his people in glory to rule and reign with him as co-heirs with Christ. What a time that will be. And church, let us meditate on that during these difficult times as there's chaos in our world, there's death and calamity. When Jesus comes back, that's gonna be dealt with. There will be perfect justice. There will be perfect peace implemented at the second coming of Christ. And like John in Revelation, may our prayer be come Lord Jesus. May God bless you as you think about the end times and the millennial reign of Christ. God bless you.